Could you briefly tell me about the Women Tech Council and how it supports women in tech? Yeah, you know, the Women Tech Council, we started the Women Tech Council about three years ago. And we kind of sat down and said, okay, we've got 6,600 technology companies that are sitting here along the Wasatch Front. Right. And not the majority of the people in the industry aren't women, but we started to find that we thought there was able to come together, to network, to mentor, or to create some visibility. So we actually did our initial testing where we said, you know what, we're just going to go out and talk to a whole bunch of VCs, a whole bunch of executives, a whole bunch of senior women, and see if, what kind of the interest is. So we did that. We held, held a couple of kind of advisory sessions, and then about took all that info, formed um, a, basically an organization, and six months later launched. And that was in October of 2007. And since then, we have... Um, we're up to a community of about 4,400 people, and it actually includes in our community both men and women. Um, wow. But there's in the Women Tech Council, and we've really just grown it organically. We do, you know, physical events. We've got an online community, and it's really around this initiative of creating value for women in technology, creating relationships that they would never have otherwise, creating visibility for women in different ways. We we launched a couple of years ago the Women Tech Awards which is right. this platform that lets us create awards programs because we found that if I'm a really great technology and business person, chances of me getting recognition are significant. But if I'm the engineer who's been coding for 40 years and I've worked on you know, fuel things that are going to Afghanistan or patents and technology that's used at Swiss Stock Exchange, chances are I don't get recognition because that's not the normal path of those awards. Yes. We created this whole program where we can highlight emerging women in technology, technology innovators, highly technical people, even service providers, and give really just this well-rounded view into women. It's been an amazing program that we've done over the last three years. Wow, good work, you guys. That sounds fantastic. Um, could you give me some figures about the percentages of women in technology compared to men? Do you, do you know anything about that? Um, so I'll tell you some of the numbers that I, and I've been thinking about um, these numbers as I was um, thinking about this interview. Yes. So um, the numbers of women in technology have actually declined over the last 15 years. We actually had more women in math and sciences back in the early 90s than we do today. Right. Which I think is, is a tragedy and partially because I think women add such a different perspective when you're sitting inside of a boardroom than when you just have a group that's you know looks kind of all of the same. And I think we're seeing, I, I think at the root of it is girls, and this has always been a problem, don't view math and science as exciting as it is. And so we're seeing fewer girls go into those programs in college, which means right. we end up with a lot fewer of them in the workforce. I believe that the general number is about 18 to 20% of the technical workforce are women. Right, okay, yes, and, and that's... um. Uh, concerning that the figures have dropped uh, rather than increased, which you, 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 I would naturally thought thought that they would increase. Yeah, you know, and actually, even as part of the Women Tech, we have an education subcommittee that is right. specifically focused on. Even we're partnering with some places that take us into the the junior high arena because we know if we can get them in junior high and have them think about how cool it is to be into computers and math and science, they'll go into it in high school and they'll jump in into into college. So we try Brilliant. to actually hit all three of those sectors. We Brilliant. have, but you know, it's still there's lots of awareness to be done because it's not perceived as the cool job to be yes. in technology when you're younger. Yes, yes. What, what do you see are the, um, needs to change to facilitate more women entering into and staying in technological careers? You've you've um, spoken about trying to get them when when they're young. Is there anything else that you guys have been addressing or researching and finding out uh, that would help women stay in technical careers? Yeah, you know, there's kind of both sides. What helps us get more women into those and then what helps them stay? I think there's a, a significant advantages for women in technology. Um, right. For me, you know, when I was looking at college and, I'm, and at all of those various degrees and I went with computer science, one of those reasons was it gave me a, techno, a skill coming out of college, but I yep. also knew that it would give me this career flexibility, which I think you've seen also in your career, where yep. depending on whatever life stages you're at or what you want to do, you you get this ability to say, I'm going to work from home sometimes, or I'm going to be in the office, or I'm going to be yes. travel around. And if I go into other types of degrees, like if I decide to be a nurse, I'm, I've got to go do my 12-hour shift, right? Yes, I get limited yeah. flexibility. And so I think yeah. we need much better visibility, not only about what 
these types of careers afford, but what those types of careers can be. Mm. Because I think when, you, especially when you're younger and even early on, there are so many jobs in the world that no one ever talks about. And yes, you're right. You know, you get this exposure once you get into industry of saying, "Oh wait, like for me, I did a computer science degree, but I did not have a passion for develop for engineering for being right. a programmer." Right. And I take me, but once you get into industry, there are thousands of jobs that are really exciting that aren't requiring me to sit behind a desk every day and program and yes. that are valuable. And I think we don't create enough exposure for all the different opportunities you'll have is if you have a technical foundation. Right. Many say that it helps a w- woman entrepreneur's position if she's technical when sourcing venture capital. Do you know any percentages on that compared to non-technical women entrepreneurs? Um, I, you know, that's a good question. I don't mm. know any, I've never actually even seen a study related to that. I, I mean, there's, yes. you know, I've seen a couple of studies actually from a couple of my friends who are professors that yes. even validate, which we already know, women getting venture is much harder than men. Yes. But I definitely know, you know, having been in front of lots of VCs and done lots of pitching, that a technical background background gives you a ton of credibility because you understand the language, you understand the process. And especially if you can add the business components to that, you know mm-hmm. how um, the whole thing will kind of be perceived. You know how to tell the story. You know, mm-hmm. you understand the financing components. And so I think because so much of a technical degree is critical problem solving, that mm-hmm. that also helps you facilitate when you go to raise funds for a venture. And I've heard from the VCs that they have much more faith and trust and confidence if, if a woman's technical. Oh, interesting, interesting. <laughs> um, have you noticed bias or lack of openness from any venture capitalists as regards women entrepreneurs? Uh, and I gather you not only your own experience, but you may have heard stories from your members. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's one of those, those topics that we talk about often because we're all about, you know, seeing women succeed and, you know, creating that level play playing field and just making it part of who we are, right? Kind of one of the launches of the Women Tech Council is we focus less on, you know, the women component and just on, you know, all these, all these things that make us successful. But, you know, there are those stories out there. There are definitely biases that happen and it's a tragedy, but it does. It's just an interesting Mm -hmm. point when I was thinking through this question, one of my friends actually ran a study on a business plan um, from a university and he created the exact same business plan and um, one of the business plans, he put a male name and on the other a female name. And then he sent it out for funding. And the the plan that had the name of a male on it got funded like 80% more than the female plan. Interesting. I've heard about um, a, a similar study that a woman um, venture capitalist did. And uh, she did the same thing uh-huh. and had the same similar results. So it's a bit sh- um, scary and shaky to hear that, though, isn't it? It Where is, right? Because sense. you... Part of me just kind of doesn't really believe that that's there, right? Yeah, me too. <laughs> you know, and, and you just go, wait, it's just this level playing field, right? If you have smart, capable people sitting in front of yeah. you, it just doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. And it just, I guess it, what it exposes is something very deeply ingrained and possibly unconscious in some respects. So, No, I, I believe that's to be true. I mean, I've been in a number of meetings where – you could clearly tell that, you know, they were, if, even if a question got answered that I was the one who asked that I was the one that was going to answer, um, that eye contact didn't come to me because I was the female in the room. I've, I've had oh. those, those experiences, you know, oh. it's not a big deal, but yeah, you know, there's definitely meetings that you sit in and you're like, no, wait, you know, that's not supposed yeah. to happen. You're supposed yeah. to make the conversation with me. Yeah, got it, got it. Um, have you found that, some successful women deny that there are any challenges or obstacles for women entrepreneurs. If they've achieved success, they don't want to know that there's anything broken in the system or that there ever was a glass ceiling. I ask this question because I have heard from both women CEOs and women venture capitalists uh, that may, may take this position. You know, I definitely believe that that's out there because at the end of the day, right, you're building this story about your career and your brand and who you are and you want yeah. it all positive. And so yeah. you're very, very careful about how you talk about things and how you position those. And I think I think it comes because you, what you don't want is any backlash on you from creating any negative stories, which those oh. t- generally perceived as. 
Uh huh. Okay. You know, so you just kind of play the game of saying, you know, in general, that hasn't been my experience. And, you know, by and large, I would say I, in general, that hasn't, my experience hasn't been that either. Right. I haven't right. ever felt like my career has really been limited by being female. I've had experience, you know, point experiences where you've said, okay, yeah, that shouldn't have happened or that's really <laughs> frustrating. Yeah. But it yeah. really doesn't define my career. And would partly that be because you haven't let it define your career? I, I absolutely believe that's part of it. Right. Yeah. I, I, I believe that the core of that is your attitude about it. Yeah. You can either I, watch for those problems and then let it define you or you can just yeah. say, oh, it just doesn't matter. Just move on. <laughs> Yeah, we need more people like you, Cindy. <laughs> um, in a recent interview with Cindy Gallup of If We Ran the World, she quoted Madeleine Albright, there's a special place reserved in hell for women who do not help other women. Could you elaborate ways that women entrepreneurs can support each other? Yeah, you know, I, I really believe in that statement. And I believe in it not just for helping other women, but, you know, when you have opportunities to give back to communities, it always yes. comes back to you tenfold. And, yes. and I believe it's also one of the most valuable ways to build connections that help you as you go through your career. And so for me, even things like the Women Tech Council, because all of us are volunteers from the day we started it through all of the board that exists today. Wow. And, and we do it because we're passionate about giving back to the community. And we've seen so many amazing things happen. I and mean, just as an example, the first year we did the Women Tech Awards, we, we kind of run it like the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year Awards, where we do 15 finalists and then we award some award recipients. Yes. And so my judges were interviewing, and one of my judges ran the Women's Center for a bank. And one of the finalists, she had, she'd been in industry a long time, but had just branched out and started her own company. And so she didn't have a year's worth of tax returns to secure a loan. Well, they yes. finished their interview, and they were having this conversation, and, and the banker said, hey, give me two weeks and let me see if I can help you. So in two weeks... Um, th this lady ends up having a loan so that she can go move wow. her company to a new office so that she can expand. Wow. And, you know, she grows to 30 employees, which she's at now. She gets a new location. And those are all relationships that wouldn't have happened without us. Yes. You yes. Know, and, and those are things that I view as giving back, right? Those are connections that they're not, they're not, you know, we didn't go, they're not our glory, but we help facilitate them. And we're willing just to spend our time creating yes. really cool experiences that are meaningful and making a difference in the lives of people building businesses and in technology. And I, you know, just personally, I'm a huge believer in that. It comes back to you. You should never expect anything in return, but yes. it's a vital component of being part of a business community. And I bet your daughters and their girlfriends will thank you too down the line. <laughs> I, I hope so. My daughter's only three, but right, I've got her on the iPhone and the iPad, so I'm training her. Oh, now. good work. Good work. Um, what do you think that women entrepreneurs or startups can do to increase their chances in sourcing venture? I think there's a ton of it that comes down to building strong networks of people. Okay. Um, because I think the stronger networks you have, and it builds more credibility with you. I actually have found, just kind of related to the last topic we were talking about, that women who are willing to spend some amount of time giving back to communities tend mm. to have higher success rates of getting venture because they're they're seen as these well-rounded individuals where they're giving time in certain places, they're leading specific initiatives, they have business skills outside of just the venture that they're giving. And so people see them in all sorts of fashions. So when you sit in front of an angel group or a venture firm, they, they get exposed to all of these experiences that you've had because they start talking to people and they say, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I worked with so-and-so at this. And mm -hmm. it just creates these lasting connections that you can't create if you're just in a bubble. I think it, that dramatically helps women. Um, yes. It's all just part of this ecosystem you have to build if you really want to play in the entrepreneurial community. Wow, well, that's a really good point. I don't think anyone's brought that up to date, so I really appreciate it. And I so appreciate you offering out your time. I know you're really busy um, and giving us this feedback. I really, really do uh, look forward to hearing more of, of what happens at the Women Tech Council. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for even doing this series. And, you know, interestingly, over the next kind of couple of years, this year when we did the Women Tech Awards, 30% of our nominees actually came from out of region. And we even have wow. some international. So as we look over the next couple of years, we, we see lots of needs as we drop into you know communities in Silicon Valley, New York City, and Austin, and Seattle. So hopefully yeah. we can even you know leverage you and some of your partnerships as we do that because it would be great. Definitely, we definitely. 
Yeah, just let me know if I can do anything to support you. <laughs> hey, you're signed up. <laughs> okay. Thanks again very much.